Good morning, everyone. Cooking up a bit of a barbie this morning. Coming out to help, Tobes? Yeah. Good work. Uh, just show you this new plate that we're using. So it's from EasyQ. I used to have the EasyQ in it already, but I had half grill, half hot plate. And I always find with the Webers, <clears throat> when you got a grill side, just so much crap from your food and oil and just burnt stuff, and anything that wants to fall through, lands on your burner, the burning ring, and it just clogs the thing up. And it just, uh, it did my head in. I was always cleaning the thing, trying to get it to burn properly. So I thought about it and I thought, how often do I really need the grill side? <clears throat> and it's not often, so I've gone for a solid plate and I think it'll be better. My, my burner's gonna stay clean. Like, I'm gonna miss out on those nice grill marks on steaks, but so be it. Um, for the sake of not having to clean it as much, it's gonna be heaps better. But anyway, today is Erin's birthday, 35. So cooking up a bit of bacon and eggs for brekkie. Here she is, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want me to refilm this later when you Alive. Done. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is still that rotary spot in Echuca, and the wind's died off. It's a beautiful morning. Happy birthday, babe. Thank you. You're all made up now. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> said happy birthday before she didn't have her makeup on uh, got in trouble so yeah I still don't have makeup on but that's nothing unusual <laughs> oh. well you look beautiful as you are oh thanks stuck up <laughs> right bit of bacon and eggs good spot so these campgrounds are pretty well set up as you oh I just had to finish that yeah. one so these campgrounds are pretty well set up. As you're driving in and out where the uh, donation box is, there's a dump point, there's a big uh, skip bin, there's can collection. So for, for a place that's pretty much unattended, it's really well set up. There's also drinking water. Yeah, drinking water so you can fill your tanks. Uh, we don't need to now because we're gonna head to a caravan park for a few days. But um, uh, the only thing is no toilets. So you gotta be self-contained, but no problems for us. So now we're heading off to Bendigo. Yeah. And what day is it? What day is it, kids? Um, Mummy birthday. Oh, oh we birthday. remembered. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said like what day of the week. Saturday. You're more excited that it's Saturday. No, so it's Aaron's birthday. Thirty-five. You've caught up to me finally. <laughs> so we're going to go spend your birthday in Bendigo. Yes. Not sure what we're going to do today, but we've got about an hour's drive from, uh, where are we? Echuca to Bendigo. And we're going to go stay at the Big Four there. And they've got a little pump track, which the kids are absolutely stoked about. And a pool and a jumping pillow and a playground. So on my birthday, I can just like chill. Yeah. And I can go have beers and watch the kids. So it should be good. We can both do that. <laughs> yeah, well, true. I do have a video I'm supposed to be working on. It's going to come out tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Anyway, onwards to Bendigo. So we're just driving to um, Bendigo. Oh god, I can't see damn thing. It's bright. Um, and we caught, we saw our first silo art, which is pretty exciting. So there's this cool platypus. And then we'll take you around the other side. Yeah, we'll take you around the other side and show you the other one. We just got to Big Four at Bendigo. Big Four Ascot we're staying at. I think there's two. There's one at Park Lane as well. 
Um, but it looks like a really cool little park. It's got a really nice vibe about it. We are going to do a lot more free camping. Like Echuca was our first one, our first low cost kind of camp. Um, we're back at a caravan park just because it's my birthday and I just want to be able to chill and have stuff <laughs> for the kids to do so they're not in our face the whole time. Um, and also we did Crisco last year and I prepaid for, I think about $1,100 worth of um, big four vouchers so that we could do things like this and not cut into our travel budget too much. So we're using those vouchers for this little stay for three nights. Kids have already bailed. There's um, that much for the kids to do here. It's so good. So we got given half an hour, two half an hour vouchers for the free um, pedal carts. There's a jumping pillow, there's an indoor playground, there's an outdoor playground, there's a pool, um, there's a pump track, basketball courts, golf courts, like so much stuff. So the kids are stoked, they've already gone. Um, I'll show, so I'll show, a little bit, 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 bit. so I'll show you around a little bit later. So for our birthday, Erin has asked for a whiskey sour and some Weber pizzas. So I've never made a whiskey sour, but I'll film it anyway. See how it goes. And then uh, show you how we do our pizzas on the Weber. Give us a look. It looks right. You got no idea what I'm doing. Absolutely no idea. She pretty much did it herself. Trying to be nice and make her a drink. That's why Mr. Consistent goes so well. <laughs> Try it. Oh yeah. god, I'm nervous. I would be. <laughs> She's sour. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what does it need? Sugar. Yeah. All right, we'll chuck some more sugar in it. All right, this is how we do our pizzas. It may not be up to everyone's standards, but it works for us. So the great man himself, Harry Fisher from Fire to Fork, says something along the lines of, a good pizza doesn't need a lot of ingredients, just good ingredients. We probably don't have good ingredients. <laughs> just from Woolies but we're you know the concept is there so our pasta sauce Erin makes this herself anyway that's the base ah uh, the paste oh Jesus shouldn't have done this after 15 beers <laughs> uh, happy birthday Erin so for the base Go to Woolies, any shop, grab naan bread. I know that might seem weird, but naan bread. <laughs> <laughs> I know that might seem. <laughs> so for the base, go to Woolies, buy some naan bread. I know that might seem weird, but naan bread on a pizza stone. I don't know, it just works. It's It's perfect. We love it. Uh, this one is like a garlic and herb one. They got plain ones or whatever, just any kind of naan bread. It's just the right thickness, it just works well. All right, so Erin's homemade tomato paste. So roast cherry tomatoes, basil, uh, red wine vinegar, a few other things. Can't remember what they are, but goddamn, it is good. 
So find yourself a wife that will make you a pizza sauce. I mean, if you don't want to make your own, just go buy a pizza sauce from Woolies, Coles, whatever. So just put some of that on. And then literally all we're doing is we've got some salami, some olives, some bocconcini, and some basil. And that's it. Just don't go silly with the ingredients. Just keep it simple. Um, we'll put all that on and then we'll go chuck it in the, the Weber. All right. So look at that. Nice and simple. Couple of ingredients. Weber is out there on high heat, piping hot. So we'll just go smack it on. Just come ready. Now that's just the Weber pizza stone, just available anywhere that sells the Weber gear. Comes with this plate as well and works a treat. And we'll just let it cook. All right, it's been in there for about five minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Chuck this other one on and I'll come cut this up for you. Oh, not too bad either. Like a proper wood-fired pizza. Mm. Tuck in. Well, there you go. Pizzas on the Weber. I think they turned out amazing. They're really good. You've been eating it. How is it? Yeah, it's like real crunchy on the bottom, but still soft on the top. It's really good. Uh, Bananas make a really good base. The only problem is, obviously, on the Weber, little baby queue, you're cooking them one at a time. So, kids have eaten ages ago. And Erin's is edible now and mine's piping hot because it just came out but hey things you got to do on the road but uh happy birthday babe thanks man cheers oh, wait. Fancy. so that is the ultimate cheesecake stack <laughs> cool right, sit down toads you ready mm. happy, happy birthday, birthday to you happy birthday to you Happy birthday, dear mommy. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Blow out the fake candle. All right, so we're heading out for the day in Bendigo, the city of flies and banks, apparently. <laughs> These little tiny flies everywhere. Everywhere. In your mouth, in your face, in your. This one personal space. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, I don't think we got it. Oh well. Anyway, we are heading off to Central Deborah Gold Mine. Now I've seen this one on somebody's Instagram. We follow somebody and they went there. Probably not... a few people. Yeah, but I, I saw this one particular post and I thought, geez, that looks awesome. So it's an underground mine tour. Uh, 61 meters underground apparently and then you do another tour of the surface of the mine and it just looks awesome uh, so we're gonna go do that now and I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous to be honest about going underground <laughs> me and all my irrational fears that's just <laughs> another one of them to add to the list anyway yeah uh, I mean if they were doing it a hundred and something years ago with the technology they had then surely will be fine hopefully i'm sure we will be i'm sure it will be fine but it's just me that's why they called irrational fears <laughs> so we'll see how we go filming under there obviously it's going to be quite dark i think you've got some lights on your helmet but not too sure but we'll, we'll see what we can get a uh, hundred bucks for a family and then that's for the underground tour and then the surface tour is or oh, it's not a tour it's just a ticket to get in to look around the surface is free it's just all part of it so it should be good i can't wait and get there and uh check this out you can kids yep kind of cool <laughs> just after the fact Mixed why reaction. do we have to wear helmets uh in case something falls because it's a dugout mine because oh. it's so safe mm. hey Just 
place looks awesome. Well, that did not go <laughs> quite to plan. Just, um, a, just a little change of plans. Yeah, so we got in there and they said that it's 13 degrees, a constant 13 degrees below ground. And they said, have which, you got your jumpers? Yeah. We're like, like no. Nah. No. <laughs> um, and so 13 degrees is quite cool, especially for us coming from Queensland. Yeah, so, Queensland is, I mean, 26 degrees is cold for us. Yeah. So we thought we we're going to, we push back the tour for an hour and we're going to, oh, <clears throat> push back the tour for an hour and we're going to just duck back and get some jumpers so we're comfortable below ground. Temperature comfortable anyway. All right, let's do this. Take two. Well, that's the uh, underground tour. Uh, that was really cool. That was awesome, yeah. It was cold down there, so glad we did get our jumpers. <laughs> cold and wet. Yeah, so if you're coming here or to maybe another mine, take your jumpers. Yeah, so we were only 61 metres underground. This thing goes to 400 and something. Mm. And apparently that's shallow by comparison to some yeah. other mines. Yeah, so. but that was amazing. If you're in Bendigo, definitely come and do this. Mm. The kids loved it too. Yeah. Belle was real scared at the start, but yeah, uh, once we got tears. down there, it was really good. Tour on our own. Don't know how much you can actually see of it. It was really dark. Uh, yeah. We don't have a light on our GoPro, but <laughs> hopefully there's enough to have a little bit of a snippet of it. But you'll just have to come yourself and check yeah, it out. Come have a look. Uh, we're going to go for a little walk up the, I've forgotten what this thing's called, Pop but it. the Poppet. We're going to walk up that and have a look at the view of Bendigo. Steep. Jeez, that is really steep. So now that we've done the underground tour, we are up top doing all the surface. Uh, it's not a tour, you just walk yourself around and have a look. This is awesome. This is the, um, what do they call it? Big battery, where they bring all the quartz up, chuck it in and crush it all, and they'd find all the gold. And then once you've done that, just over here, you get to pan for a bit of gold. So, don't really know what we're doing, but we'll have a good crack, see if we can find a few little bits, because they reckon you can, and you get to take them home. So that's pretty cool. Put a small amount of water in the pan, tilt it towards you, and swirl it around so that the water makes waves around the pan. What's the video? As the sand pushes away from the pan, the gold will be left behind. Show us what you found. Show the camera. And swirl it around so that the water makes waves. No gold. So you've got those gems. Cool. Righto, so we're on our way back to Central Deborah Gold Mine. This time not for the gold mine, but they do a talking tram tour of Bendigo. So we figure it's the easiest way to see the city pretty much. Yep. It's, well, Bendigo's bigger than we thought. Yeah, it's massive. I didn't, I don't know what I was thinking Bendigo would be like, but not this. I thought it would be more of a small town yeah, vibe. Yeah, country town. But it's so big, so spread out. So this will be a great way to see a lot of those old buildings because it's such an old place. 
It's a 45 minute tram ride. Yep, I think it's 30 bucks for the yeah, family, but $30 we'll, we'll confirm that when we get there. I think it's $10 an adult and $5 a child. Yep. So, should be pretty good. that tram was built I've said it before about everything else it's just amazing that like that's still operational and it just functions perfectly yeah they just don't build things like they used to I mean it was loud and rickety but that was but uh, it's over 100 years old so yeah well you got to expect that don't you yeah that was an awesome way to see Bendigo uh, it only goes for 45 minutes but it just takes you out through the center of town out the other side and back they pretty much point out all the sightseeing spots so you know if you go on that it's only 30 bucks for the family mm. and then you can figure out what you want to do after that so mm. yeah i highly recommend it once again guys thanks for watching that was bendigo and we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves yeah especially that gold mine that's amazing bit of history that was like a really cool experience like we were all a bit nervous but it was totally worth it in the end it was really good yeah if you're going there do the deborah central deborah gold mine underground tour yep. Like we said, 100 bucks for a family, but well worth it. It's the deepest underground tour in Australia. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's one of the only mines that's been preserved the way that it was left when they shut shop in the, uh, was it the 50s? Yeah. 70s, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, pay heaps of attention. Yeah, <laughs> it was a few days ago now. <laughs> but anyway, guys, if you're enjoying this stuff, click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Good.